Hey, everybody. Hope you're all doing well. It's Monday. And I have Rob Smales here from Hamburg, Germany. It's great hey, to everybody. have you. Hey, Rob. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you. And you? Yeah, good. Had a great weekend. Had a little bit of rain. Um, we want to welcome all of you guys here. This is episode 16. And uh, we're switching things up a little bit, uh, giving Lisa debates just a little bit of rest uh, to, to get in. Uh, she's one hour earlier than me. She's been getting up so early, and uh, but you'll probably see her back next Monday. Anyways, uh, we want to welcome you, and the topic for today is uh, going from fear to fired up, and we want to know how many of you guys have us, like, in your studio practice, in your art practice, have experienced any type of fear um, if you do, please, in the chat, let us know, like, number one, your name and where you're uh, calling from today or Zooming in from, not Zooming in, YouTubing from. It's Monday. <laughs> <laughs> and then as Rob shares his top three tips and we discuss, go back and forth, we love to know, like, how are you feeling about what he's talking about? Okay, so this is definitely interactive. If you have a comment that you would like to ask Rob or myself, uh, we want you to do that. We want you to feel completely uh, free to do that. So um, I'm going to say welcome to Marianne, Julia, Kimberly, Marion, Elaine, Marla, Rob Simmons, Juliet. Wow, great group of people. So Rob, what do you want to talk about first? Um, well, usually I'd caveat a conversation like this saying, well, I'm not an expert, but Actually, when it comes to fear, I'm quite an expert because I spend quite a lot of my time trying to overcome it. So, so I do have um, quite a few things um, to talk about. Um, thanks for inviting me on. Um, when you did, I was really excited because it is something that really interests me, this topic. I think and it's I so want to, to give a shout to, out to, to your uh, website because it's, it's um, you. um, yeah, you've been painting for, uh, I should just say a little bit about Rob before we all get started here because <laughs> it's pretty important. Number one, uh, Rob is one of my admin in our pro membership, and he's I've known him ever since, uh, what, 2018 or so. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we met in my first course, Powerful Design, Personal Color, but he is now admin. I've got some great admin uh, in our pro membership, and he has this website where you want to definitely check out his work. And he's recently had shows in Hamburg in 2020, so kind of right in the middle of COVID. And then uh, London recently in 2022, uh, he's from Hamburg and he's going to be moving to London. So um, round of applause for Rob oh. and thank you Rob, for joining us. It's awesome. So, okay. With that, uh, please yeah, dive into these tips that you want to share with us. Nice way to start with a round of applause. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I guess maybe to start by um, just saying a bit about how this uh, chat's going to work. So I was thinking we could, me and you Pam, maybe have a kind of general chat about fear in general, how it manifests itself, why it kind of comes up as an adult, as, as a creative. And um, I've got certain general ways of thinking about fear and uh, trying to um, tackle it head on that way. And then um, we did promote this um, hour as being um, also with three top tips. So they'll be coming later on. Um, they're not really top tips in the sense of um, very quick, quick fix solutions. It's more kind of um, sort of clusters of uh, ideas that I've thought about and uh, found, collected, and sort of apply in my own art practice. So that's and coming. How long, have, coming a bit how long later. Do, you, do you feel you you have been an artist, Rob? How long have you been painting? Um, that's a good question. So. I guess the first answer is all my life. It was definitely my favorite subject at school. Um, I didn't end up pursuing it after school, which is a very long story. But um, just in terms of progress and the progress you make without even realizing it, before meeting you, Pam, in 2018, the idea that I'd call myself an artist was, you know, it would have filled, filled me with absolute terror. Oh. Um, these days, you know, it just slips off the tongue. You know, I don't have to think about it at all. So, and that fits in a lot, I think, with this mindset stuff we're going to talk about today, because um, you can make such massive shifts over quite a short period of time. That's sort of five years since meeting you. Um, and a lot of time talking about this kind of thing, but it does make big permanent differences and changes. 
Yes. Well, it's amazing. I'm looking at the chat now and, and uh, Marla says, terror, uh, that's about right. And uh, people talking about fear. Um, I experience fear with painting all the time. I think it boils down to not good enough, right? And, and guys, thank you for being here because this is a really, really important topic. We all, I mean, you know, for being honest, right? We all feel some sense of fear. Uh, another person was asking for your website. So I'm going to pop that up again because yes, you guys want to definitely check out Rob's work. Um, he has, you know, and, and, and we'll have a lot of discussions here because he has a very identifiable, beautiful style, uh, very abstract and colorful. And, um, you know, we have, we have lots to talk about. So let's uh, go ahead, Rob, you, you take the. Okay. Take um, so I have some notes down here. If I uh, keep looking down, that's, um, that's why I <laughs> got uh, <laughs> some things to guide me if I forget what I'm talking about. Um, I guess the first thing I wanted to say is, well, first of all, we all know fear is a very natural thing. Maybe it's one of the most important instincts we have or the most important one, you know, it's all about survival. But obviously, um, if you make a painting and you don't like the outcome, you're, you're going to survive in terms of the life or death situation. So, um, yeah, I guess the interesting question, of course, is why does that fear pop up when it comes to, to our art? Uh, perhaps some good news to start with as well. The fact that we're scared of it, I, I guess, suggests that it matters to us. It's really important to us some, somehow. So that's a very good place to start. Um, and in terms of how it manifests, um, I guess uh, procrastination is something we all um, know, maybe even on a daily basis. It doesn't have to be art, can be anything, of course. Um, and just sort of three scenarios I wrote down here that maybe a lot of you can relate to. I don't know where to start. I feel overwhelmed. Um, that's obviously a classic uh, scenario, and it's much easier to then decide to do it tomorrow and go and watch TV instead and have a nice relaxing evening. Um, <laughs> I think it's going to be too hard or take too long. So that idea of, am I going to be able to fit it into my day or my life, my schedule? Um, that's something that pe definitely puts people off and that fear kicks in. Um, and the third one here, maybe for me, at least the biggest one, whatever I do, it won't be good enough. But before you've done it, you can still hold on to that kind of hope that if I did it, it would be good. But it's big, big white fear that kind of I'm going to take that leap of faith and uh, there's a possibility I might be disappointed with the results. So, but there are a lot of workarounds for that particular one about not being enough in terms of mindset. Good. Well, we want to hear about it. <laughs> okay. So... Um, the other thing I chatted with you uh, before about uh, Pam a bit, I mean, the obvious people to compare us to in this context is little kids, right? Like under fives. I mean, I'm sure lots of you um, have your own kids, grandkids, and it is amazing to watch uh, children that age make art and how unfearful they are. They're completely fearless, in fact. Um, so yeah, I guess maybe put it back to you for a minute, Pam, like what, what happens when we, when we get older? Yeah, well, that's a, a big question. Uh, I often try to think back to my earliest memory of doing any art, you know, and I, I do remember the joy. Um, I think if any of us can think back to that, the earliest memory we possibly have of creating art um, and, and think about uh, the fact that we weren't thinking about it, right? So it's it's hard to think that far back, especially as we get older, to that time of like non-judgment, um, non-critical, just doing and enjoying. And I I drew these horses and they had tree trunk legs <laughs> and they never got any better. They were always the same. They had four uh, tree trunk legs um, and they had a little bridle and, and a mane and ears, you know. But they never, as far as I can remember, they kept being the same and then they stopped. Yeah, so that's my earliest memory. What's your earliest memory of like? Um, I saw some photographs recently of me, very small um, painting. And it just, I guess, reminded me of my nieces and nephews and, you know, it can be fast and furious and there's, there's not much thinking involved really. It's very um, intuitive. But, but were you attracted to any one motif? Like, did you love 
a certain type of animal or tree or did you draw your parents or you know how everyone does the house with the kids and the thing yeah <laughs> um, definitely things like that I remember on Monday mornings in school we used to have to draw our weekends so you know it was like the square oh. car or the classic sort of the, the <laughs> sunshine with the with the yeah. red um, okay. cool <laughs> but um yeah, I thought a lot about this. I think I've even talked about it before in, uh, in our ASM course. Um, so we get older, and I think there's several things happening. Of course, we do become more sophisticated in terms of our sort of cognitive ability. Uh, discernment gets more sophisticated. We become aware of all these other artists and lots of great art in the world. Some we like more, some we like less. Um, so that's a good thing, like to become slightly critical or have an inner critic, I think is also essential to a certain extent. You know, it, would be, it wouldn't be any good if we were completely fearless all the time. I'm not sure if, um, um, I'm not sure if art would quite be the same thing if um, we didn't have that critic in, inside us. The, the secret is somehow trying to tame it. Um, and I think the other thing that's happening or that's definitely happened to me in my life is this idea that I think kids making art, their self-worth, their kind of perception of who they are is completely detached from the artwork. Um, you know, the, we're human beings, not human doings, you know? So like just the idea, just, just the fact that they are on earth here is kind of enough for them. Yeah, Where that's a lot, right? That. Yeah, that is a lot. It's like a miracle, right? We're all kind of miracles. Right? Yeah. Um, but the moment we go to school and, you know, we have this social conditioning, then you have to do exams at school and you, you're either top of the class, middle of the class, bottom of the class. And that kind of magic of being a kid disappears, unfortunately, right? Yeah, maybe that's when we first, like you said, I, I think getting, getting graded, right? That's when we first start to realize that some people will be uh, smarter, higher grades, some will be lesser grades, but we start to feel like there is now a hierarchy or pecking order. And yes. because, you know, school is emphasized by our parents and we know how important it is, we translate, we take that whole package of stuff over to the art that we're doing. And it's like, oh, well, that must mean then that, that some are going to be super great and some are not, and then some are going to be below average. But yet it's not true because there, there's no such thing as one artist is really better than another because these are personal journeys. Yeah. Yeah, but it, it's literally taken me 30 years to, to realize that. Yeah, you know, that me too. In a different category, a realm all of its own, a magical realm. You can't mark it out of 100, you know. You can't give it gold star, silver star. Um, it's all so objective, but that's, that's the amazing thing about it, right? Yeah. And don't just you, this, think, like, don't yeah. you think, Rob, like the most important grading, if you want to talk about grades... I mean, if, if you have to, like, if you're still, you know, stuck with that mindset in a way, it's like, I'm the only one who should be grading your artwork is you, right? Like uh, yeah. saying, okay, this is more me. So therefore, this is the direction I should go versus, wow, this feels really uncomfortable and I don't like it. Um, and that's, that's our own assessment. And it's not, it's not open to the world's judgment. It's like, we are, I think we as artists, um, when it comes to the crit critical part, needs to come from within us and we need to be very careful about listening to the outside world when it comes to our art because mm. nobody knows us like we do. Mm. I think also this idea of again maybe a parallel with the exams at school like I've often fallen into the trap of thinking oh that person's good I'm going to try and copy them you know like looking over their shoulder. Yeah. Um, and there is kind of a fine line between really admiring someone. It's obviously fine to be inspired and admire someone, but then think you have to emulate them. The moment you want, you think to yourself, I need to imitate, you're kind of doing, your, doing down your self-worth, you know? So yeah. that's, that, that's something that's taken me so long to realize, but it's crucial to be like, I have this, um, all, this world all of my own. And I can, like you just said, like, if you don't like this, you can choose something else. You can go a completely different direction. Right. So in a way, the prize, like the gold star, is the process itself, right? Like you, right. you, get, to, you get to choose. Yes. Right. Um, so, so, um, 
<laughs> yeah, that's a really, a really big point. Um, another thing I thought of on a, on a general level, uh, I was at the, um, it's summer here, so I was at the outdoor pool the other day, the other week, and they have this huge diving board really, really high. And all these sort of school kids were diving off and it's this big spectacle, this big show. And, you know, my thought is never in a million years would I be able to jump off that thing into this water below. But um, just preparing for this, it made me think uh, such a good parallel to art making, because whether you're, you've never made a painting or you've been doing it for 40 years, um, there's always a bit, you always have to jump off the diving board at some point with every new work. It's always sort of delving into the unknown. Even if you know there's, you know there's water at the bottom and you know you're gonna be okay. And even if you belly flop, you're gonna get over it. Um, but there's so, there's so many parallels, I think. Um, I've just made a quick list here. So the first time is obviously the scariest, but every time you do it with practice, you know, after a hundred times, might still be quite scary, but it's not as scary. So I think that's something that's definitely true in the studio as well. The more the more you practice, the more you paint, the more you make a mark, the less scary it becomes. Um, the other thing I was thinking about, you know, quite often they have two or three or four different heights of um, diving board. You don't have to go and jump off the highest one straight away. Like nobody's forcing you to do anything really. Um, so if you decide you do want to take take the plunge, just start at the bottom, maybe on the baby or toddler um, diving board. You don't have to have a big audience of people watching. You can do it, you know, late at night when the pool's empty. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And yeah, I think just as artists generally or anyone creative wanting to create, you just need to get comfortable somehow with being uncomfortable, you know, like putting your toes over the edge of this diving board. And I think the water at the bottom is kind of like all this mindset stuff we're talking about. So even if you do belly flop, like there's there's techniques you can have to kind of soften the blow and um, sort of pick yourself back up, sort of refresh yourself, as it were. So, Rob, yeah. in your own in your own practice, can you can you talk about think back to when you had the greatest amount of fear? What what represented the, the the low diving board and then the middle diving board and then like where are you now? How did you how did you in your own uh, studio um, find like what what was the easiest bar to overcome like the the lowest diving board? How did you make that more fun and less fear? So definitely, I think the very beginning is a tricky one. And especially these days, I'm in ASM and I have this lovely community of artists and I have you, Pam, as sort of mentor. Um, but if you're on your own, I mean, that's also really difficult. Um, these days I'm doing things not always um, quite as abstract as this behind me, but quite, quite kind of um, abstract, using my whole body, intuitive, imperfect. Uh, when I first started out, I mean, I would... If I was doing a portrait, for example, I would draw a very, very detailed grid, almost painting by numbers. Wow. I would spend a long time, first of all, um, penciling it all in and kind of the opposite of this. Um, and my order, I, um, I have to be honest, like my first um, priority was uh, what I had in my head was, oh, how are people going to respond to this? Are they going to like it? Um, I wasn't really doing it for myself. I think if I'm honest, it was more to kind of prove myself to the outside world, as it were. Right. So that's, although it's kind of safe in the sense that I'm hiding my true self, it's actually the highest diving board, right? Because you're setting yourself for, up for this huge leap where everyone's going to watch and all eyes are on you. And... I mean, it's very precarious, that kind of strategy. Yes. Because you're, you know, it's almost like pretending to be another person. So you're sort of wandering up to the, or, you know, climbing up the steps right to the top and you know that actually you've never done this before and all this kind of thing. So, um, yeah, yeah, I guess that was the, high, the highest. Whereas the lowest, um, I'll probably come on to this in more detail a bit later, but just for example... 
saying to yourself before you start an artwork on a piece of paper, you know, like a tiny sort of, just do, just do 20 minutes or 10 minutes of doodling or mark making and just make sure you don't show anyone, you know? <laughs> threshold, the threshold is really low. Like, That's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Well, there have been a lot of people admiring the work behind you. And, uh, you know, if you want to talk about that at some point, too, I'm sure people would love to know more about your process. Like I said, guys, we're talking about fear today and we're, we're trying to stay on topic. Uh, we know as artists, so we we see things, we admire things and we want to go off into another direction. But we're going to try and keep this pretty tight so that Rob can get through his top three tips so that you guys can learn from him and we can, you guys can jump into the discussion. Okay. Okay. So tip number one, we'll, we'll dive in. Um, I mean, it's kind of what we've just been talking about. So I've called it artwork is self work. And in a way I would say these days, I almost do as much work on myself and my what's up in here and my mindset spend probably as much time on that as I do making art itself if not even more, possibly. Wow. So um, it's every day. Um, and it's kind of like a lifeblood to my art practice. Huh. And it takes quite a lot of forms. So uh, taking courses, PDPC, ASM, things like that obviously gives a structure. Um, and certain modules there, like Discover Your Soul, is very much, um, you know, that look in the mirror. Um, and it's um, through reading, I read lots of books, um, I meditate, I write lots of things down, writing feelings down is always good, I find. Um, just general contemplation as well. Um, but one thing I wanted to say is that it's kind of like a fight. Um, so it's not that you develop um, skills and techniques and this inner critic and this demon voice disappears, but it's kind of a way to tame it. And um, it's all about kind of how you respond when sort of moments of self-doubt and self-sabotage and fear pop up. Um, so yeah, um, I guess the tip one is to get used to giving yourself a pep talk if necessary, if necessary on a daily basis. Um, and Part of that, I think, is to really get try and get clear on like as clear as you possibly can on your intentions and your expectations. So what I was just talking about before with um, set it, starting out and drawing a grid and then carefully um, trying to um, create this perfect, not photographic, but a realist portrait. Um, my intentions these days are sort of 180 degree sort of turnaround from that. So um, I've written down here, unlearn who they told you to be or who you've conditioned yourself to tell yourself you need to be. Whatever we've been told we are, we need to reevaluate that and see if it really aligns. Give yourself agency to express your true self. And that ultimately I think is vulnerability, right? So, um, you know, for some people, maybe that really is what they want to do um, is to create realist um, portraits. And that's fine. But um, that's definitely not me. That's something I've learned over the last five years. Um, and I think along with that intention, um, I think my sort of top priority goal, um, and I'm not saying this is going to be the same for everyone, but this is me, um, to get as far away from people pleasing and pretending as possible. So I think when I was doing that perfect portrait, it was pretending. And quite often, I think we, we do pretend in life without realizing. Um, and if I can uh, achieve through my art, a state where I'm pretending less, um, that's what I'm aiming for. So that's all like central to the pep talk I give myself on a daily basis. And um, along with that, I think um, a lot about this idea of expectation management. Sounds a bit boring, but um, <laughs> it's just the idea that if you are just starting out, you need to, or even if you know, you're somewhere along the road, you need to um, have 
have dreams, but also be realistic. So rather than say, I need to have this gallery show or be represented by a gallery by the end of the year, which is, of course, a lot of, um, a lot of pressure. pressure. Um, there's nobody in the background um, putting that pressure on you. It's, it's, only, it's only you, right? Um, of course, it's good to sort of push yourself and um, make progress. But I think a lot of fear comes from that artificial pressure we put on ourselves. Um, so that's one thing to bear in mind. Um, of course, we all know intuitively that it's not going to be plain sailing, like in life. And that's another um, reason we procrastinate, because we realize anything worth doing, good art or good in the sense of personal art, um, it's going to involve a little bit of suffering and ups and downs. So, um, and also not only excitement and wonder, but also kind of mundane uh, moments as well. You know what I mean by that, Pam? Like mundane um, um, mm -hmm. times yes. in the studio when you feel like you're making progress, but you're not completely lit up, right? You're... Yeah, I mean, and I think the important thing too about what you're saying about like, and, and I'm trying to like pop up some things that you're saying here because you're saying so many good things. And mm -hmm. I'm sure you guys are like writing away and you're trying to keep track of Rob. Good luck with that. <laughs> he has so many great ideas. But first of all, anything worth doing uh, is going to involve some suffering, ups and downs, and also the mundane moments as well. And, you know, I, I, I know there are a lot of things that I feel that we all feel in our studios. Um, they may be mundane. I mean, everything from having to clean your brushes, right? And, and the cleanup part, like I, I detest that because yeah. that's like, I don't want to even clean my house. So cleaning brushes, yeah. it's hard. But yet, you, you know, the reward if you clean your brushes is that the next time you get them out, um, your paints won't be muddy. So that, that little shift in your mindset as well, you know, the reward for cleaning up my brushes and yeah. Making sure that, right, they don't dry up and turn hard is, is that, number one, I won't have to buy that brush again. So the mundane can be turned into um, also that very low bar of entry. You know, hey, if I can just spend 10 minutes doing something, you know, mundane, like organizing my my uh, collage papers in, in color, in, in value or whatever, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um so yeah, that I guess uh, was tip one, um, strive for authenticity and get really clear on your intentions, your personal intentions, they might be very different to mine and your expectations. So yeah, to avoid those really high abstract expectations, maybe just start with the low bar, like you just said, Pam, um, and then it's always easy to put it up rather than, rather than down, right? Yeah. Um, so tip two um, is to create your own personal world of art, um, both in your head, but also I'm thinking with this one, um, your immediate surroundings, your studio or the room you make art in or the table you make your art at. Um, there's so many things we can't control, but this is something we can control. Um, so mm, I'm thinking, in our in our module one, discover your soul in ASM. We um, talk we talk a lot about you know things we love, um, and it sounds obvious, but um, put all the things you love in, around you in your studio. If you have a favorite mug, um, you know use that mug before you start your painting. If you love shells, fill your studio with shells. If you love um, splattering with paint, then you know splattering. Or if you love you know minimalist order um, go with that. But just um, I think it's really important to create an environment where you all ideally look forward to entering that room. Um, my, my studio has become a bit like a cave, you know? I feel like it's quite cozy, it's quite messy, um, it's full of paint, but it's also a bit like a, a sanctuary as well, like a kind of sacred space. So I'm in there a lot on my own. Occasionally, I've made the mistake of letting strangers come in. Um, and that can be tricky. So, But that just shows me this physical space has become special to me. The light and, you know, I know where everything is. And it's kind of a little bit chaotic, but I like it that way. And um, 
the more you can develop that kind of environment, um, coming back to fear, I think it does take that edge off, um, you know, oh, I'm out on a limb here. I'm, that when it comes to doing things that are uncertain, you're in this safe space. I don't know how you describe your studio, Pam, and if it helps you with fear or... Yeah, well, actually, I, I'd love for you to talk about that big change that happened kind of recently in your studio. You know, you had X amount of space, and then you uh -huh. made this gigantic decision, which which just boggled my mind that you, <laughs> you essentially sold all your furniture and turned your entire apartment in Hamburg, Germany into your studio. I, I'm curious, like, how did you feel before you did that and then after? Because that's a huge move. Yeah, yeah. Um... So I did do that. Um, of course, not everybody is able to do that, um, but I found myself living my own. Um, so I had all this space suddenly and decided that I don't watch TV anyway, so why do I need a living room, you know, with a <laughs> TV? <laughs> um, so I decided to go big and all out, as it were, and it was very scary. Um, and I have now got art spread all over my house, um, which I like, and... Um, I change things around all the time and I've always got sort of bits of paper all over the floor. Uh, <laughs> but actually have to say when it comes to proper intense painting, I've retreated back to my old studio room. Um, oh, okay. I don't know. Um, there's something about that space and um, which I'll be leaving at some point soon, but um but I think you just, again, you know intuitively, like, what's the right place for me? And if you haven't found that yet, maybe it's worth, um, yeah, having a think. Um, you know, there's always artist communities or um, depending where people live and everything, um, the shed at the bottom of the garden. Um, but just going to those places where you feel good. Interesting. Yeah. Like you're, you're talking about a, a pretty high level of sensitivity to your surroundings to, you know, make that big move. And then you got all the space and it's like, but now I kind of need that more contained space where I feel more productive and then maybe use the larger space to really spread out the work that's in progress. Or you can just walk yeah. by it, you know, but, mm -hmm. but the big part of your apartment is now for looking at work. It's not for the doing of the work. Right. Um, and, and just being sensitive to that, I think, is a really big deal. Um, yeah. And another thing that just occurred to me, I hadn't, been, I hadn't thought about it before, but um, as time has gone on, these days, and again, five years ago, I would have thought this would be quite conceited and arrogant. That's how I would have um, interpreted it. But I have a lot of my own work hanging everywhere. Um, and, you know, I do get visitors and um, I think in the past I'd probably be embarrassed and take them all down. But, um, you know, it's not to say that, I, you know, I love my work more than anyone else, anyone else's work. And, you know, I love t tons of other artists, but um, I make art for myself. So it's logical that I would want to look at it afterwards. Um, I think that's quite a natural, logical next step. So... I love this idea of surrounding yourself with art. And I know a lot of people in our group, you know, I can see in the clothes they wear and the collections they have and, you know, the poetry they write, they make, their, they just fill their, their life with art. Um, right. And that's what's possible once you, once you get over that initial fear. And in a way, the more art you can fill, fill it with, the, the more that threshold of fear goes down, I think. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So you want to review the tip one and tip tip two, and, and then we'll go on to tip three. Yeah. So tip two, I guess, uh, tip one is the authenticity and uh, really those intentions and uh, expectations and maybe just writing them down as a sort of definitive list or set of ideas. Tip two, I guess, is um, creating this wonderful, beautiful world for yourself, a safe space. Um also one where you can trust your intuition, you can play, um, and somewhere ultimately that you just want to keep coming back to. Um, because as we all know, routine and consistency and practice, um, it, it, we need, you need to keep it up, you know, even if it's sort of 10 minutes a day. And it's that idea of um, 
yeah, I think if you do have a nice place that you can do it and you look forward to going back to, you're less likely to sort of give it up. Right. And I think that uh, going forward and for those of you in Art Success Masters in this next year, one, one thing we're going to be doing is learning how to have small little rewards for ourselves because, I mean, we're kind of like the dog that needs the treat, aren't we? <laughs> I mean, what little dog doesn't want a little treat? And I think, you know, and it doesn't have to be anything big. It just has to be something that we really like, whether it's a manicure, pedicure, uh, I don't know, maybe there's a certain restaurant that like, you know, you show up in your studio X number of times and guess what? You get to get a great big hamburger or something like that. I mean, Hey, that works for me. I'm yes. driven by like, you know, treats. Um, so yeah. anyways, yeah, we'll be talking about that. <laughs> okay. Rob, let's, yeah, go ahead. Treat, but also sort of a reward or also rest is also good. It's just, you know, oh, yeah. treating yourself, right? Yeah. If, if you plan in time for rest too, you're more likely to go back the next day rather than you know give up or give up completely i guess but um tip three um i've um summarized as positivity so it's a little bit more general and maybe not quite as um closely connected to um the art itself but um i'll just whiz through some of these um i'm not um really telling our audience here anything completely new, but it's just worth bringing up in this context, I think. So focus on the good and good things will happen to you. Sounds really easy, but actually it's not, it's not that simple. I found in the past I've, without realizing it, become quite negative or got into a bit of a spiral of poor old me and, you know, ooh, bad luck there, bad luck there. But um, I think if you have an overall attitude that, the universe is not a hostile place. Of course, there's lots of bad things going on in the world, but but the idea that, generally speaking, nature outside and all of life is kind of on your side. And the more you put into something, the more you will get out automatically. Not to say that it's going to be smooth sailing, as I said before, it's, not, you know, it's a long and winding road, but to see that kind of as part of the fun, I guess, or where the juicy bits of life are in the struggle, and to try as much as possible to stay positive, be positive, act in a positive way. So um, I've broken this down into sort of four or five parts. Talk nicely to yourself. Also sounds really obvious. Um, but again, um, only quite recently did I realize that how I talk to myself, well, first of all, it wasn't in a very nice way. And just how much of an impact that has on your subconscious mind. Um, I'm not a scientist, I'm definitely not a neuroscientist, but um, I didn't realize until quite recently that your mind can't really differentiate between a thought you have and the truth of that thought. So if you are telling yourself that you know, you're not good enough, you're too slow, you're, you, you, your brain does get convinced by that. But the good news is the other way around. If you kind of give yourself a high five and tell yourself in the morning that you're killing it and well done for showing up, like just as quickly you can rewire your brain to sort of be that friendly person you want. Um, just like the, the really welcoming, safe space of the studio in your immediate surroundings, you can set up here, you know, you can make it a nice place to be as well. So, so uh, Rob, what are you doing putting post-its on your mirror? I know Lisa debates that she's like, you know, she, I don't know if she said she had post-its on her mirror, but you know, she'll, she'll regularly do that with her own mindset. Like, you know, you're awesome. You're fabulous. You're, you're you know, what do oh, you do? I'm doing that a lot. I mean, I, um, there's lots of apps these days. You can start your day with a five minute meditation. Um, to some people it might sound a bit hippie-ish. Um, that's fine. May, you know, it might not be meditation that people need maybe for some people, it's religion or going for a walk um, with the dog. Um, but just to find some way of, a lot of people will know Mel Robbins. Um, she's also a really sort of major author and talks a lot about mindset. And she has this high five um, strategy oh, okay. where, you know, you, give, you look yourself in the mirror in the morning and you physically give yourself a high five. Um, and it's sort of all just little and often. It's all about repetition, right? So you're not going to, the first time you give yourself a high five, you might not really believe it or it might not make a big difference. 
But if you did it every day for a year, you know, it's not going to hurt. Um, yes, yeah, it's just cumulative, isn't it? Exactly. Um, can you name some of these apps? Um, I'm sure people will be asking, like, what apps? <laughs> I want to know. Yes, they're quite big. Um, the one I use is called um, Insight Timer. Okay. It's free. I'm, I'm typing this. It's okay. It's a free. premium version, but it's free. And um, it's kind of like a YouTube with meditations. So... It's not, it's not just about kind of positive self-talk. You can use them to go to sleep, wake up, uh, just relax. Um, cool. There's another app called Calm, I think. Um, mm -hmm. There's quite a few these days. Um, okay, cool. So I, find, I find it really useful. And you can do an hour-long one. You can do a three-minute one. So it is really easy to sort of just turn it on and treat yourself to one is a good way of treat thinking. Yourself. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Um, so what else is on my list here? Um, gratitude, I guess, fits in with what we've just been talking about. Trying to focus on um, good things in life, seeing things as miracles, um, trying to find the wonder, even when things sometimes might be a bit mundane. Um, Self-care, um, I think we've covered that, I'd say. I think, ultimately, you need to be able to love yourself unconditionally that's like kind of the, the big one and that's also easier said than done I think if you know coming back to that that's those school experiences and there are a lot of conditions that you end up putting on yourself as an adult but I think if you don't work on that putting yourself first and really caring for yourself and being like I've got you in your head you're going to run into difficulties in art making because it is difficult and it is um scary um and especially if you want to make vulnerable, authentic art, um, you've you've really if you've got to believe in yourself and your your own worth, independent of the art. Um, there needs to be a little bit of distance between there, I think. Um, so coming to the end here, um, tip three: remember, is uh, the umbrella term is positivity. So. Um, also on the list is eliminate envy from your life, um, which is, uh, I think, also a massive one. Um, so I think envy, like fear, is quite a natural feeling. I don't think it's something you need to be particularly ashamed about. I think we all experience it. But I also think that kind of uh, feeling and emotion has no real benefit, especially when it comes to making art because it's just such a negative feeling and the person you're envious of is not going to sort of not going to even know about it so it's kind of a, it's kind of a pointless emotion to have but of course it does say something is reflective of the fact that we're insecure about something at that point so maybe it's an opportunity to sort of turn the mirror back on yourself and say why why are you envious of this thing or this person um and if we're talking about being envious of other artists, um, this idea that there is room for all of us, you know, that's quite a classic one that, oh, there's this sort of exclusive club of artists who are already sort of set up and going and they, they're in their studios and there's little old me and, oh, um, I mean, that's fear again right there, right? Sort of imposter syndrome, I guess that's what that is. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I'd like to just add about envy is that, you know, we... <laughs> any one of us can look out there in the world and there will always be people who are achieving um, some sort of a success that we would love to have ourselves. But I like to think about reverse engineering our envy in that, you know, it's, it's fine to say, wow, I, I wish I were that person because X, Y, and Z, but then reverse engineer it and say, but what did they have to do to get there? Right. Yeah. Number one, they had to show up in their studio. Uh, they probably put in their 10,000 hours. Uh, they probably did so many things that you're probably not doing because it's repetition with variation in your studio on a very constant basis. Um, and if you know, if you realize that any other artist, what they're achieving, you know, you can look at achievement versus the art itself. Like you may just be envious of their style, but that style could only happen if you lived their life and you don't. So there's nothing to envy as far as um, a style of artwork. You can admire it, 
But just keep in mind that your style of art, others will envy or not, doesn't matter. That's not the point. Um, your style is something only you are capable of doing. And so it's not about, you know, envy is such a hollow thing when it comes to like um, admiration for somebody else's style. Again, um, have gratitude for your own style mm -hmm. because that ultimately is um, if you focus on that and making that the very best it can be, then all the achievement that you could possibly want will happen. Don't you feel that way, Rob? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I came up with this um, way for myself of thinking about um, me in the constellation with all other artists. And I came up with this comparison to like world cities, sort of like capital cities of the world. So you have, for example, Paris, who say, I don't know, it's Picasso or um, everyone has an association with Paris. Um, many, many people love Paris. It has a complete flair, unique um, to that city. Then you have Tokyo and then you have San Francisco and you have um, Rio de Janeiro and they're all completely unique. Um, and none, not one threatens the other do you know what i mean so they're all beautiful maybe maybe some people think one is more beautiful than the other but they can all exist coexist um without threatening the existence or the worth of the other one right and that's exactly how i see different artists you know you can just because you love tokyo you can you can think to yourself oh i, I love tokyo but i'm going to be here in my own city and do my own thing you know yeah and yeah, maybe, your city is important. <laughs> yeah. So I think a nice way of thinking about it, like one doesn't threaten the other or the, you know, the trees in a the forest, then not one of them is straight. The other one's bendy and curvy and, you know, they just coexist and they're each beautiful in their own little way, I guess, or big way. Yeah. And just imagine if uh, if you are one of these big cities, you, let, let's say you're Tokyo, let's say you're uh Rio de Janeiro, like Rob was saying, imagine if you didn't show up in your studio and there was no Tokyo, there was no Rio de Janeiro. Why don't you guys just name yourself to be a city? <laughs> and like, you know, do you really want to, to rob the world of that city? Um, or do you want to just be that city and be yourself? And because you're adding to the world, you're not, uh, you're adding, you're adding to the, the amount of joy that, yeah. that is offered to the world. And imagine the world without your city. It's just not the same world. Yeah, and there's so much space for your city and you know thousands of others. There's just infinite space. If you think in that abundant way, um, that's, that's definitely the way to go, in my opinion. Awesome, Rob, um, awesome. So I guess that rounds up um, pretty much the end of tip three as well. Awesome. <laughs> Uh, do you want to do a quick summary of your three tips and just the, the title so that people can uh, wrap their head around all this great information? <laughs> um, so, yeah, tip one again, um, authenticity in the sense of see, just take a look and see, are you people pleasing in your life, in your art? Um, maybe take a look at that and write a kind of man maybe a manifesto. What do you want to achieve um, generally in your art in the next year? Um, tip two, that sort of um enhancing as much as you can that physical space that you can control so making your studio a nice place to go in the morning um maybe focusing on the details and you know um the devil is in the details so you know your favorite mug is the the thing that i always uh, think of and the tip three uh, positivity so talk nicely to yourself um if feelings of envy do come up just flip that back in yourself and say, look, why is that? What what is it about me that that's you know that that's uh, that's causing that? Um, big up other people, celebrate your own successes, but also celebrate uh, the successes of others, and then we could all sort of rise up together. Um, yeah, and I guess to close, um, had a few tiny little um, concluding points here. I've written down: um, you're already ready, so you just get started. Uh, the longer you wait, the harder it will get. Uh, um, I think that's something we can all relate to. Um, a bit like exercise, the thought of it is quite often much worse than when you actually get going. So just to take that first step or 
that first jump off the low down diving board. Um, I'd encourage anyone listening, let us know if uh, you go and do that straight after this chat. Hopefully at least one person will do that. That Then it will <laughs> be worth it. Right. Um, yeah, and just get comfortable being out of your comfort zone. I think as artists, we instinctively know that's where all the fun stuff lies. Even if it's scary, that's the kind of paradoxical thing. And the scary struggle is kind of almost where we want to be, even though we instinctively don't want to be there. Um, yeah, and treat yourself like your best friend, not your worst enemy. That's something I always keep repeating to myself. Yeah, these are great. I hope I hope people I hope you guys will will listen to this again and again. I know I will because you know there's something about uh, when we have these types of discussions versus you know just watching an artist paint. Um, keep in mind that you can be listening to what Rob just said while you're painting. And I mean, I myself feel like I'd have to listen to this a few more times to get all of the little nuggets that he's just shared with us. So. In chat, you guys, do you have any questions for Rob right now about anything that he said? Or if, is there something you'd like us to, um, you know, pin? Because we can pin your comment. Uh, we'd love to hear from you and uh, give us feedback on this topic of fear. Like, do you want more on this topic? Or uh, we have other things uh, lined up for you, don't we, Rob? <laughs> we do, yeah. There's plenty to talk about. I, I always Two Pam, I could uh, talk forever. So I hope I hope I'm gone on too long. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, we're not we're not telling anyone they have to stay here, but we have a lot of people who stuck with you. So I think that's a good sign. Um, okay, great. Thank you, Rose, for your feedback. She says uh, this discussion is so amazing. We were so happy to hear that because again, you know, we don't know who's out there on a Monday. We don't know what you guys are up to, um, but we really appreciate you being here. And uh, again, here is, let me get Rob's website. You definitely want to check this out. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, Rob, I'm sure has a mailing list. And if you want, don't you, Rob, on your site? Yeah. Yes. Join his mailing list so that you're like alerted to his upcoming shows. He'll be moving to London. So expect some shows, more shows there. Um, yeah, we're following you, Rob. It's, it's really awesome what you've been able to accomplish. Um, so going back to comments, let's see. Yes. Um, Kim Kimberly says, I love this topic and like Rob, keep reading and writing to deal with my very aggressive inner critic. It's so good to discuss it. Thank you so much, Kimberly, for that comment. Um, and then Bev Curvin says, uh, just what I needed to hear this morning. Thank you, Rob. Just loved it. Great. And Robert Simmons. Thank you so much. All right, guys. Um, yeah, we uh, let's see here. Donna Herring. Um, she wrote, "Being authentic seems to imply you know who you are and what you want." Is that do you think? Is that how you think of that, Rob? Yeah, absolutely. It's. Um, I mean, it's a process, and I think art making is the process of getting to getting to know ourselves. Um, and we're kind of evolving all the time, but that's my number one goal. If I can get closer to the core authentic version of me that's the reason i'm here that's, can you uh, can you describe okay because we've all you know it's easy to say oh you need to be authentic how do you personally know when you've been authentic like what how do you know um so i know for example just one random example that springs to mind is yes last night i was at a party and after about a few hours i was bored and in the past, I know that I would have been too scared to leave the party. So I would have stayed three more hours just to please the person who invited me to the party. I but see. yesterday I left the party um, because <laughs> I decided that actually I don't want to be here. So that's, I mean, maybe that's not the best example, but um, I think it's all in decision making and an honest, being really honest to yourself. So it's very easy coming back to that example. I could have said to myself, Oh, well, it's not that bad, you know, like trying to convince yourself that you are being authentic, but actually you're not. And I don't know if um, to translate that into um, thinking about art, um, thinking about like which colors are my. Um... I actually think um, I might be getting myself in a bit of a mix of uh, thoughts and words here, but. There's a difference, there's a big difference between what we talk about in ASM 
for example, what we are attracted to and what we love, that is um, also has, has to be authentic. But I'm talking about authenticity in the sense of, am I performing a role right now? Mm. So am I doing that grid on the portrait because that's intuitively what, I, what I'm drawn to and what I feel is, feels good? Or am I doing it as some kind of performative thing because I think that's what I need to do to be validated by people outside of me? Yeah. I think authenticity always, always, always has to begin inside you. So it doesn't matter if the guy who invited me to the party is now disappointed that I left because it's all about me. And um, that sounds, you know, really selfish if you take it out of context, but it's essential that you have to put yourself first always, you know, like on the airplane with the, with the uh, emergency. <laughs> yeah, the are... respiratory thing that hangs down from the ceiling, <laughs> the oxygen, right? Yeah. But, um, but, but I, you know, just, and we'll close this call pretty soon, but uh, one thing just popped into my head about authenticity. And I think um, we're, we're constantly battling um, that dichotomy between what do we really want to do today in our studio? Like if I could do anything, what would I do versus, or should I be doing changing this painting? So it looks more like that painting or this painting or this body of work or that series or whoever, however people think of me as an artist, should I be conforming to other people's idea of who I am as an artist? Or if I'm being honest and authentic, I want to go that way. And am I going to do it right? Do you ever yeah. feel that? Because, like you mentioned, the grid and and the grid is is very prominent in your work, but and and it may always be. But like, how do we know if that's an authentic part or part of us being like, no, I have to, I always have to have this because that's what people mm -hmm. know me for. I mean, that that's the problem, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that that is a big problem. Yeah, I guess um, one thing I heard recently um, that was a real light bulb moment for me. And it, it's helped me a lot, actually. Um, you might not be the artist you think you want to be. So oh. you might get it in your head. I love artist A. I love artist B. I love artist C. And oh, they have all these things um, in common. So I must want to sort of look vaguely like these people. But then if you authentically turn up in front of the canvas, you might end up doing something that is, you know, a million miles away from what you think you want to be doing or where you want to be going. Just because you admire an artist or two or three artists so much. It's a bit like going back to the capital cities again. That's authenticity, I think, to be like, oh, I thought I loved, you know, these beautiful pastel -y light paintings, but actually I'm painting black and brown. Um, and to then be like, okay, well, that must be me, you know, rather than then suddenly be hating on yourself and, oh, I need to try better to, I think, yeah, I mean, our authentic selves can be ugly as well, right? Yeah. Um, it's authentic. And I think yeah. people always sense that. Here's a comment from Michael Ross. He says, I felt like my work in fiber wasn't really coming from a point of authenticity, but rather was created from a process I learned. I'm switching to get more in touch with my inner authentic self. Yeah, yeah. That, that's an awesome comment, Michael. And it's just like, that to me is the ultimate courage yeah. to break away from comfort, acceptance, people love your work, you're selling it, all those things, right? Those are societies like high five to you, but you know, to break away from that and say, you know, I'm ready for a change and then do it. Um, isn't that the ultimate in courage? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, Rob, so much. I could talk to you all day. Yeah, and, me too. Uh, I love always talking to you, Pam. It's always <laughs> uh, so much fun. Um, yes, I hope I've rambled I, on too much. That's no. my fear. <laughs> <laughs> well, you ramble away. Uh, we love talking with you, Rob. Um, and as one of my admin, I just want to say, wow, I feel so lucky to have met you about five years ago. Um, I remember that first image you popped into Powerful Design Personal Color, and I thought, you know, it just like, yeah, it was a portrait. It was really strong. And, um, but I look how far you've come and it's just like amazing. I think you're on quite a trajectory. And again, you guys, uh, take a look here for, 
uh, his website, Rob, and soon he hopes to have a YouTube channel. So we hope that you will then uh, subscribe and we can't wait to see what he has in store for us. So well, thank, thank you, you, Rob, thank for you your time. Too, um, I could only uh, return. Uh, I mean, you've changed my art. You've definitely changed my life. Um, and thank you to everyone for listening as well. And um, yes. yeah, I haven't read any of the chat yet. So I look forward to having a look in in, in a bit. Yeah, thank you all for joining us on this Monday. Uh, next Monday, um, I'll probably have Lisa debates. I see her in the chat there because Rob can't, you know, Rob, we're going to switch off just, just so you know. It's always going to be a surprise because we <laughs> don't want you guys to get too complacent, right? <laughs> but then Rob will be back and we'll mix things up, okay, to make it fun for you guys. So thank you, Rob. Have a wonderful evening in Hamburg. Uh, and this week. <laughs> yeah. Thank you okay. all. Yep, we'll see you soon. Bye now. Bye.